guys and welcome back to our channel for another dose of Disney. Ah, who is excited? I'm excited. I have been really making notes, really thinking hard on how to go there with you all today and to discuss the most ultimate important thing you need to do for your trip which are your Disney Fast Passes. They are so important and they have proven so like my head's going woo on what we have to think about and so on and such forth. So I will be talking to you today about Disney Fast Passes, which Fast Passes we have gone for, how we have organised the Fast Passes and first of all, before I launch straight into that, I want to show you I am wearing my new fabulous Disney ears. I absolutely love these Jasmine inspired ears. I got these and ordered them online from Lindsay Land Co and they arrived in this amazing bag. How fabulous is that? Who does not want to come home to a package that says magic mail on it? I mean, that bag is fabulous. So thank you so much, Lindsay. I will leave the link down below um, for Lindsay's Etsy page. They arrived super quick. I love them. They're so comfy, they're so light. So I cannot wait to be wearing these in Walt Disney World in August. So now onto the main reason I have done this vlog today. So for today's Dose of Disney, I will be talking, like I've said, about Fast Passes and how we've organized ours. So I have had the map guides out, looking, planning where the rides are on the park, the distance between each ride, all those things. The first thing I would say you need to do before you organize your Fast Passes is to do a rough plan. You need to do a daily itinerary. I mean, it doesn't have to be, this isn't as detailed as it might look. It's a spreadsheet and we've got which parks we're going to on which days. There's a um, morning, afternoon. Obviously it says any book, any, sorry, any meals box, so any dining that we've made. So we know to factor that in around the fast passes that we choose to, to go for. Um, obviously we have, like I've previously said, we have got tickets for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So we've got the day in, when the days that it's actually on, but the day that we're going on there. Because um, things like that are going to affect the opening times of Magic Kingdom and when it'll close, obviously, for the ticket holders to be there and when you need to leave if you don't have tickets. And then also... Um, any shopping days, water pot days. We've also put in our rest days as well. Don't forget, if you haven't seen our previous vlog, we did say it's really important to factor in some rest time. As much as you want to get round everywhere, it is not going to be doable. And you just kind of, I think if you accept that before you go, you're not going to be disappointed in any way. I mean, you're going to Disney, how can you be disappointed? But don't feel like pressure yourself. I feel a lot of people pressure themselves to try and fit in absolutely everything. Factor in rest days, factor in what you can and enjoy what you can do while you're there. Otherwise, you are going to get a bit disappointed and it could ruin your trip. Don't let it ruin your trip. So, like I say, we've organised which park we're going to on what days and the meals books, which has then led me to help decide which fast passes, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's dog eat dog getting those fast passes and especially with when we're going. So we are going in August peak season it's going to be busy all the more reason to plan so that brings me to the next if you can't see already I love planning I think the planning is just as exciting as going so I have done a rough guide I've called it our fast pass plan of action and I have done a rough guide for each day of which parks we're going into which fast pass so I know on the day when it opens up which fast passes we are going to want to try and get so how it works, fast passes are absolutely ideal. They are free. They are completely free of charge for you to get. Um, I've explained how we have chosen about the ones that we're going to pick, obviously on which days that we're going to be there. So basically how it works with your fast pass is you can choose three initially. You can pick any three rides that you want to go to. I say any, that changes. At Magic Kingdom, you can choose any three rides that you want to go on. Once those fast passes have elapsed, once you have completed all three of those fast passes, you can then choose an additional one fast pass each. So you have to wait until obviously the time's gone, then you can go for another one. 
Another important thing to remember that when planning your fast passes, they all have to be at the same park. So the original three that you receive each day have to be at the same park. You can't choose to get two in Magic Kingdom and then you go into Wapcot in the afternoon and try and get one in there. You can't, you know, vice versa. You, you can't switch them around. They have to be in the same park. So, first of all, for getting your fast pass organised, if you haven't already and you are going to Disney, you need to download, it's completely free, the My Disney Experience app. I've talked about this previously and it is fantastic. It's been really, really good in helping us see um, what daddy it basically loads everything you sync it together with your ticket so we can see as a group of us going we can see what dining reservations we've got made you can see the park map you can see the park queuing the queuing times for each ride again that gives you an idea of roughly the wait times you could be looking at so obviously the longer wait times they're the rides you're going to want to keep an eye on and potentially use a fast pass for so make sure you download that app and once you have got your time comes round to fast passes they will all be linked on that app so you're going to need that to kind of organize and run your trip while you're there as well so make sure you have that and obviously you take your phone and have everything with you so if you are when you can organize your fast passes so if you are not staying on site at a disney resort you can organize your you can go for your fast passes 30 days before you go so you can go onto the my disney experience app Try and get the fast pass that you want for each day, 30 days before. You can only do one day at a time, which I think is going to give me major anxiety because I just want to know that we can get the ones we can get. If we don't, we don't, but you kind of hope, don't you? You can't help but hope. If you are staying on site, so if you're staying in one of the Disney um Disney properties you can book your fast passes 60 days before you go and also you can book for your entire trip at the same time which is fantastic so if you're going for a two-week trip you can get your fast passes organized for those full two weeks so I'll definitely say take advantage of that we're not staying on site this time we are staying in a villa nearby so again 30 days and only one day at a time they open up the um, fast passes, sorry, open up in the UK on the app at midday. So I will be there logging on each day, trying to get what we can get. Um, with, the other thing that's really good about this is if you are going in a group, you can link all your fast passes will all be together. So you can select one person to be the leader of it. And then all your fast passes will be linked so you can see who's on what ride when. That doesn't mean that you all have to go on the same ride. So, for example, we're going with Rick's parents, which is amazing. And then there'll be certain, they might get certain people in your group that don't want to go on, you know, some of the faster rides or some of the wet rides or things like that. It's always really important to have this conversation beforehand because, you know, obviously you don't know if anyone on by booking your own fast passes. But at the same time, it's good to have that communication and then there might be some rides that they can save a fast pass on to so say you wanted to go on Big Thunder Mountain, they weren't particularly a big fan of it. That would be a waste of a fast pass for them because they don't want to go on that ride. So you could book that for certain people in the group while they might want to do something else. That's certainly something to think about when you are organising it and organising it all together. So fast passes are available at the four parks. So you can get them in Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Epcot and Animal Kingdom. Now, I'm looking down at this, we have organised for our first day the Magic Kingdom, which is where I'm going to start with. So Magic Kingdom does not have a tiering system. It is the only park for fast passes that doesn't have a tiering system, which means you can go online and you can try and secure three fast passes for any of the rides that you want to go, which is really helpful, really. So for our first day, for example, um, I've actually got us down for arriving for the rope drop at the castle, which is at 8.30. We're really lucky. With Dan and Emily, our day starts at like quarter to seven anyway. We'll see how that is when we're over there and they're in the heat and they're tired. But at least for the first couple of days, we can see how they cope with that. So we're going to get there for the rope drop. Now, the benefits of going for this are some of the bigger attractions that would usually build up a bigger wait time usually you can get on quite quickly first thing so for example things like Buzz Lightyear, Under the Sea with Little Mermaid, 
Dumbo and It's a Small World. They usually, you can get on with them within five, 10 minutes. They have really, really low wait times first thing in the morning. And that's another thing that's ideal. Try and get there for first thing if you have young children, which is what we're doing. So then we can come back a bit later on in the afternoon to the villa and they can cool down. So with that in mind, we have gone for the main ones that we would kind of, what the general consensus is from other YouTubers we've watched, people that have recommended to us that have been before. The main ones that you would want to try and fast pass for Magic Kingdom are Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, and the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Even looking at the um, My Disney Experience app now, which probably isn't classed as obviously peak season, um, you can still see they have really high wait times, even by 11, half 11, 12. So get those in in the morning. Now what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get a fast pass really for any three of those between nine and 10. The idea being you don't have to head straight for that fast pass at nine o'clock in the morning because you made it. You've got that hour window to get to your first fast pass. So in that time, try and have a look where you put your first one. So for example, if we got Big Thunder Mountain, we would have a look at what is around Big Thunder Mountain. What can we go on before we head straight over there? There's also, um, obviously, it, we could get straight on to Buzz Lightyear, which is in Tomorrowland. You've got Under the Sea, which is Fantasyland, Dumbo's Fantasyland, and It's a Small World is Fantasyland. So try and see which rides you can, you can clear, that sounds awful, but clear, you can go on before they have a queue time and as you head over to your first Fast Pass. As soon as you check into that first fast pass, it could be 10 to 10. That is okay, that is absolutely fine, but it's making most of the time that you're in there. And also, it's the coolest part of the day, especially if you're going with little ones. So you can get on those rides before you either, you know, go in to see a show a bit later on to get out of the heat. You might have a dining reservation to get out of the heat, or you might just choose to go back to your hotel or wherever you're staying for a dip in the pool and then go back into the park later on. So that is what we are hopefully, fingers crossed, going to do. Now, Magic Kingdom, like I've said, is easy, no tiering system. The other parks have a tiering system. That means it's good because obviously there's no clash over the big, the high attraction rides that people desperately want to go on, but it also means you can only fast pass one of these. So they are tier one and tier two. Now, some of your higher queue rides, for example, if you were going to go into Epcot, you've got Test Track, Soarin' and Frozen. They are all tier one rides and you can only fast pass one of these. So you're gonna have to make your mind up which one you want to try and fast pass, which one you want to do. If you're going back to the park another day, it's not a problem. You can try and get the one that you didn't get for another day. So keep that in mind and obviously keep the group in mind, what they might fancy doing if certain people don't want to do it. Because the same thing is, again, you don't want to waste their fast pass. If you want to go on test track, they're not really too bothered about it. There might be some, they might want to desperately go on soaring. So, you know, they could use their fast pass for that. So bear that in mind. So, for example, for Animal Kingdom, I mean, it's an absolute no-brainer for us. And I think for most people... We are going to spending our second day going to Animal Kingdom. Again, I've hopefully got us down arriving early. We want to try and get there first thing in the morning. And the reason being for that is like everyone else, we want to get over to the Avatar rides. We want to get over to Pandora. We desperately, desperately want to go on Flight of Passage. And I think we are there with everyone when we say that. These fast passes are like gold dust. They come and they go so quick so i am keeping everything crossed that we can get on that now i know myself rick and we'll get daniel on that one because he would desperately enjoy that i'm not sure if rick's parents want to go on it so again i need to double check that with them if they want to do that ride if we do get a fast pass for that so that is our tier one ride that we want to fast pass for that day our tier two rides that we're going to go for is the kilimanjaro safari and the kali river rapids now the safari, again, from what we've been recommended, is definitely something to try and do in the morning. The heat of the day, the animals are just gonna be like the rest of us. They're gonna try and get out of the sun and go for shade to cool down. So if you want to go on the safari, the best time to do that is in the morning, which is when we're gonna head for it. 
Also, the Collie River Rapids. This can vary. I've seen sometimes at the minute on the app, it doesn't have massive wait times. But again, look at the weather. It's still hot there, but it's not going to be as hot as it hot as it is in August. So people are going to be wanting to go on a water ride to cool off, which is why we've chosen that as our second tier two fast pass for that day there. Um, hopefully we can see when we get there, the rides that tend to be look so far at that time in the morning from the app that are quite quick to get onto are the Navi River Journey and also the Dinosaur Ride in Dino Land. There is It's Tough to Be a Bug, but we're going to try and hopefully do that a little bit later. Um, that can be our escape out of the heat. So those are our rides that we're hoping and the fast passes to get for Animal Kingdom. The next one that you need to look at, which we are doing, is Hollywood Studios. Now again, you've got your tears still in here, like I was saying. So the main one, the general consensus that we've been told is get on Slinky Dog because get a fast pass for that. Fast passes again go really, really quick and it has really high wait times. So we know Daniel would absolutely love to be on this ride, which is why we've chosen that as our tier one. Now for tier two, we're still kind of unsure on this. We've put down Star Tours, but again, we've heard that sometimes it's not always a big wait. But you just don't know and what we're bearing in mind is is august when we're going so it is going to be busier so we've put down star tours for our tier two and then we're stuck between two for our tier two which is rock and roller coaster and tower of terror maybe you guys can help us with this comment down below which was your favorite which would you choose between rock and roller coaster or tower of terror i feel like i need to conquer fears and get on tower of terror um I've also got a note on here, which is again another really good reason to do a plan. We've actually, this, e uh, this evening when we go to Hollywood Studios, we are going to watch Fantasmic, which I cannot wait for. Like I say, I've never seen it. And we went for the Fantasmic dining package at the Mama Melrose uh, Ristorante, and we've got that booking at 20 past four. Now, if you haven't seen our previous vlog, I'll just quickly explain. The reason why we chose to get a dining package is Obviously, we'll have been there all day. We'll have just had like a quick snack for breakfast. We do plan on taking some snacks with us. I've seen that heat. We don't eat much during the day. The kids won't be eating much, so we're just going to take snacks. So we've picked to go there, but also there are three restaurants you can choose to get the Fantasmic Dining Package with. And we chose to go to Mama, Mel Mama Melrose's Ristorante um, just because we looked at the menu and we know that the general consensus is we all there was something that we'd all eat on there. By going there, that was also given each of us a like a, a priority seating ticket for the Fantasmic Show. It just sits you in a better section and especially with having two younger children with us, obviously Dan's only really eight and a half, Emily's four and a half, it's just that reassurance that you know you can get a seat during the show. They can have the popcorn ready and enjoy it in comfort. So we have that to look forward to on that evening. Now on to Epcot. I cannot wait to go to Epcot. It's It's been a life, lifetime away since I last went there. So I'm looking forward to see if anything's changed, going around the food pavilions and you know, just having a look, maybe having a little cheeky drink around the world and just, you know, being there. I think Epcot is one of those that is, you know, it's just magical and it's so sort of um, pinnacle, I think, with Disney trips. So, again, you've got your tiering system. Now, we have chosen to, obviously, you've tier one, like I explained, you've got your Frozen, Test Track and Soaring. Now, we have chosen this time of put down to Fast Pass Frozen um, hopefully we will get another day, obviously, to go to Epcot when I will arrange fast passes, either for, for Test Track or Soaring, get there early, fast pass one and run to the other, vice versa. The reason I've done Frozen is, obviously, we love Frozen anyway, and also our little girl Emily is obsessed with Frozen. So I know it would be really lovely for her grandparents to see her little face on this ride, and to be honest, I'm really looking forward to it. It just looks so magical. So I've put down Frozen for hours. Now I've also, then for our tier two rides, I've put down Spaceship Earth. Now if you aren't aware, Spaceship Earth is closing on the, I can't remember the exact date, I'm pretty sure it's in 
September, October 2019. So obviously if you're watching this ahead or behind or ahead of time, whatever. But Spaceship Earth is closing. So naturally you can see it on the app if you've already got it. The queue times have already gone up because people want to go on it before it closes. It's not closing for good, it's closing for refurbishment. So it'd be really exciting to see how they update it and what they do with it now. But it's definitely, oh, sorry, it's a bug there. It's definitely a ride that we've chosen to fast pass. It's kind of like a, a big hurrah seeing how it was. So I put that down for our tier two. And our next tier two is Nemo and the Seas. Um, again, at the minute, it might not have big queue rides, but looking at the app and kind of gauging it, I think that's all you can really do. You can go off advice of people give you, you can look at tips, you can look at the app, but you just don't know, do you? You don't know until you're there. So I suppose sometimes fast passes can be a bit of a gamble, but having a plan and having your, your itinerary of where you wanna go might just help you. And then finally, again, we are, we've got a few more days back in Magic Kingdom than we have in some of the other than we have in some of the other parks. Sorry, I can't speak today. Because obviously with the age of Daniel and um, why can't I speak? The age of Daniel and Emily, it's just more appropriate for us to be in there. We are going to Universal Studios as well, but obviously you can't fast pass Universal Studios, which is just painful considering the new Hagrid roller coaster ride is going to be on. And I think me and Rick will want to go on that one. So even if me and Rick one evening leave the kids with the grandparents, they have an evening and me and Rick run back and try and queue up for that ride. It would be amazing if we could get on it. We've already kind of come to terms. If we don't get on it, it is what it is, but it would be fantastic if we could go back. So for example, I just wanted to add in as well, um, uh, we have any extra bookings and things that you have made, it's always worth putting them on your whatever plans you make, just so that when you are on the app and you're not kind of lost in the moment of booking fast passes, oh, we've got it for this time, this time, this time, because then obviously it's a waste once you've done it. Um, book it, anything extra you've added, like character meat, character breakfast, things like that. We've included that because on one, one morning we've got a character breakfast bus booked at the Crystal Palace, I can't speak today, booked at the Crystal Palace. So we've had to incorporate that with the times that we would go for a fast pass. And also, where are we? We have got Emily booked in, which obviously she has no idea because she doesn't know about the trip, but she's booked in at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique in the Magic Kingdom. So she has always watched vlogs and everything about people that have gone in there and mummy, I want to have my hair done and things like that. So she is booked in to go in there and I just think she's gonna absolutely love that. Um, a little bit of girly time for her just to have a hair put up and you know, the glitter and it's just part of the magic, isn't it? It's the age she is. So yeah, make sure you include those. Um, we've also put in, this is the evening that we're going to, it's our, it's like our last evening. So we're going to be um, making sure that we finish our evening, uh, our holiday, watching Happily Ever After. Anything like that you include, just make sure you make a note of it. Like I say, just so you, it, it just, because you get so frazzled when you're trying to plan it all, it all can become quite a lot, which I found, I mean, I'm excited and I'm loving every single second of planning it and the fast passes that we would do, but just worth having those things noted, you know, just so you're not caught up in the moment. So I hope I haven't spoken to you quick through all that. I think I probably have, and I may have missed things out, which is why I'm going a bit do lally today. But I hope that's given you all some idea of any sort of help towards fast passes, how we've looked at it. And yeah, if, if there's anything that you think I've missed off, any rides that you would definitely recommend, please comment down below. Anything that you know you would suggest, especially around Damley, Damley, I can't even speak, Dan and Emily's age group, or anything that you would recommend for us, then please leave that comment down below. And thank you for joining me for another dose of Disney. If you have enjoyed this video, now that I've finally got my words out, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and I will be back soon with another dose of Disney. Thanks guys.